We are in uh, weekly part, Torah portion. It's Parsha Chukat, or Chukas, as they were saying in this book. Okay, page 838. <clears throat> what happens, and I'm going to run through the first part fairly quickly, because I really want to get to the other part, but I don't want to uh, cheat this first part. Namely, it's Chukot. What it says is, by the bear Hashem and Moshe and Aaron, they more Hashem spoke to both Moshe and Aaron, saying, "Zot Chukata Torah." This is a statute of the Torah. Should see Hashem and more that Hashem spoke to uh, the commanded, saying, "Dabel ben Israel, speak to ben Israel, uh, and Vayichu Elecha Farah Aduma, take for your, take for yourself a red heifer, Tamima, completely red heifer, a she'im ba mum that has no mum, no blemish." That's what that means. Shelo uh, Allah Allah Ol, and also did not never had a yoke on it. So it has to be a cow that never had a yoke. Now I want you to think about this. You have a totally red heifer, right? That is born. If it's a black heifer, it's a black heifer. It's a normal cow. If it has black and red, it's a normal cow. You don't have to do anything. You just bring it up as it would go, and so on and so forth. But suddenly you find a red heifer in your uh, flock uh, red heifers are worth a lot of money because of the process that it can go through and you can now uh, once you see it's red you no longer can put a yoke on it so it cannot work it can't do anything so you are basically going to feed the and take up br bring up this heifer for two years mm. of its existence and and hope that and hope and pray that it does not develop black hair and does not have a yoke or ha does not have sexual relations with the, uh, the male cow. So you have to keep it separate. That was the case recently of uh, the red heifer in Lakewood, uh, Lakewood uh, oh. New Jersey. Oh. Everybody, the guy kept uh, the red heifer, very good. He had all the news media was out there and it was, uh, uh -huh, and was, um, going well and suddenly he, he kept it separate from the bulls and great and what what happens two years later approximately a year and a half later whatever it was they find that the red heifer is pregnant <laughs> so here this this guy was thinking he's going to bring Mashiach and what did he do he bring another he brought another cow into the world because his red heifer was ruined because that was consider work so the red heifer is not no longer an important thing he uh, they can put him to work now her to work that would be the predecessor for the base of because yeah. we have to I thought they already done this in Israel they, they, they haven't got a completely red one yet <laughs> if they did if we don't believe me everybody would know about it because we could then we'd have to become spiritually well, pure the, the, the press you mean the general press or the, the Jewish, Jewish press? press? The Jewish press. Oh, oh. The general press didn't care yeah. one iota about it. They, they, nuts, right? <laughs> right. Uh, you keep a red cow <laughs> when you're in <laughs> servant. You don't let it work. When you cry, it's crazy. Oh. But that is really what's going on. So now, wow. uh, I just want to have that in mind that that's what you have to do with it. Now, yeah. our school, of course, gives his introduction. Let's run through it really quickly. Wow. The law of the red cow is described by the sages as a the quintessential chuk. Chukata Torah, the decree of the Torah, meaning oh, oh. that it is beyond human understanding. And this is all from coming from Rashi, because Satan and the nations ha taunt Israel, saying, what is the purpose of this commandment? The Torah states that it is a decree of the one who gave the Torah, and it is not for anyone to question it. That's how Rashi explains that. Mm -hmm. In other words, when we get a chuk, a chuk yeah. that's a statute, it's mm -hmm. not within our province to, I, to say uh you know to give reasons even though we will ultimately give reasons it, it, but if we can't come up with one nishkefelech it's not such a problem and therefore you have to just do it so ramban explains that this particular commandment invites the taunts of heretics because it is performed outside the temple as if, as if to propitiate the demons, quote-unquote demons of the field. Yeah. Tosa, so he says, that's why people will mock us. In other words, if we did it in the temple or in the Mishkan, that would be normal. You guys are crazy, but it's normal. We're not going to taunt you for that. But where you're bring, going uh, out to the field to burn it, so it's not to God anymore, now it must be to the demons, so you know better yeah. than us. 
sort of thing. That was the taunting, according to Ramban. Tosfot states that one should not one should not try to explain this precept because God gave us His best and most secret commands in the form of a divine kiss, as it is, as it were like the intimacy of a lover to his beloved. It is axiomatic, however, that since all laws of the Torah are the products of Hashem's intelligence, any human inability to comprehend them indicates the limitation of the student, not the teacher. As the sages expressed it, there is nothing meaningless or purposeless in the Torah, and if it seems so, it is only a product of our own deficiency. That's Maimonides. So everybody's coming to the defense of what a chok is. Remember, a chok has a reason. We just don't know it. Now, we may come to understand it later on, and our, the more science it takes over, and the more we become enlightened, to use that sort of language, well, the more we'll understand more and more and more, potentially, of what happened. But just because we don't understand it, and that's the point here, just because we don't understand it doesn't mean we can ever not do it. Ultimately, every single commandment of the Torah is a chok. Some of them we can understand readily, such as you shall not murder, you shall not uh, steal, kidnap. We understand it's common sense. We don't need, we really don't need a Torah for that, you would think. But then again, Nazi Germany proved us wrong, Mussolini proved us wrong. All the people who killed for whatever reason they killed, murdered, and, and it's this very day, the, uh, the people who are murdering left and right, yeah. uh, their own people. So uh, again, because uh, whatever reasons they want to give, but it seems that we have a big problem with what seems to be a logical commandment people aren't paying attention to. It's like, well, the atheists say, well, I don't, I don't need to, to be divinely commanded to be logical. Correct. To do the right, Correct. To do the right Correct. thing, that's what they say. And to that, you, 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 to, to that, you simply throw them the communists, the socialists, yeah. the uh, the Germans, or the Nazis yeah. who killed with using their logic yeah. because yeah. they felt that we were a disease and they felt that uh, gypsies were a disease and they felt that all these other were subhuman. Yes, all that logic is true that uh, a, a person should not need the Torah, but obviously yeah. this is, uh, history has shown that without religious law, and to all those people who are going to hit me up on this, good luck. But for all, without religious law, somebody telling us there's somebody greater than us, something greater than us, giving us these laws, we just go crazy. Mm -hmm. And certainly when we act in the name of this supreme being, without being commanded by the supreme being, we, we again go bad. Okay, so the, I don't want to say that those, there are those, the crusaders, who killed because they were saying we have to wipe out the Antichrist and the Muslims who killed because we have to wipe out the infidels. Well, that, they, that was a prophet telling them that, supposedly. It was a one-person sort of thing. And, you know, I'm not here to debate their religion. But the, po the point of the matter is we weren't told by Moshe to wipe out the Canaanites. We were told by God to wipe out the Canaanites. And we couldn't even get the job done then because we, not that we weren't strong enough, it's just that the compassion took over. That's all. But anyway, that, uh, that's a different thing. So the Midrash of, to this uh, chapter focuses primarily on one paradox of the laws of the red, calf, uh, heifer, uh, the red cow. Its ashes purify people who have become contaminated, yet those who engage in it, in its preparation, become contaminated. That's a, that's a strange thing. In other words, you would think that those who are preparing it would be it would be an inoculation against impurity. But no, it works the other way. Those who prepare it become impure, and the, but the mixture that they'll make, create in the end makes the person who is impure pure. Again, we're talking about in the spiritual sense. It was regarding this aspect of its laws that King Solomon asked, uh, exclaimed, I said I would be wise, but it is far from me. Mm. On this theme, Midrash cites the verse, Who can draw a pure thing out of an impure one? Oh. It, is it not the one God? In a similar vein, the Midrash notes a number of such paradoxical cases of righteous people who descended from wicked parents, such as Avraham from Terach, Hezekiah from, Hezekiah from Ahaz, Josiah from Ammon. The Talmud tells uh, that the paradox, by the way, it goes the other way too. 
Esav from Yitzchak. Uh, Yishmael from Avram. So there's no guarantee to anything. So the Talmud adds that the paradox that is forbidden to drink blood, but an infant nurses from its mother whose blood is transformed into milk to become the source of life. So you know, there's a lot of contradictions as you were. The underlying message of all the above, as well as the many other mysteries of the Torah, is that the supreme intelligence has granted man a huge treasury of spiritual and intellectual gifts, but none is more precious than the knowledge that Hashem is infinite, both in existence and in wisdom. While man is as limited in his ability uh, to comprehend as he is in his physical existence, as Rabbi Yochanan said, told his students regarding our failure to understand the laws of the red cow, it is not the corpse that causes contamination or the ashes of the cow that cause purity. These laws are decrees of Hashem and man has no right to question them. In other words, an essential component of wisdom is the knowledge that man's failure to understand truth does not make it untrue. Okay, so just because bottom line, and now we'll go on, to where the other part I want to cover. The bottom line is for the red heifer, again, all that goes into it is just because we don't understand the process and we don't understand how it could be that a cow uh, burning it up and uh, mixing it with certain things is going, it's not a mixture, it's not inoculation of against anything. It wouldn't save you. And we're talking in a spiritual sense only. The person was contaminated by death or whatever he's contaminated by. And suddenly he has to be sprinkled on specific days, the third and the seventh. There's a whole process there that if you, in the first uh, Leah, if, if you read, you'll see what the process is. And I, again, I invite you to go through it. Right now we want to go to page 842. Okay, 842. Uh, verse 20. Uh, uh, chapter 20, verse 1. We're coming to the great sin of Moshe Rabbeinu and of uh, Aaron Kohen and why they could not get, enter into the land of Canaan and why they couldn't bring the people into the land of Canaan. Okay, so here we go. Ve'yavo b'nei Yisrael, chapter is verse 1. Ve'yavo b'nei Yisrael, kol ha'edam in Midbar Tzim B'chol Shrishon. So all of b'nei Yisrael, the entire congregation, uh, came to the Midbar Tzim the first month. Ve'yeshev ha'am v'kadesh. And they dwelt in Kadesh, but Tamat Sham Miriam, Miriam died there, but and she was buried there. Okay, so that's what's happening for us. What and so Rashi explains that uh Eda Eda Shlema is the entire congregation. What does he mean? Shekavar made to Mate Midbar. Everybody who's supposed to die died at this point. We're talking forty years later, at the end of the journey. So, okay, so the, the spies uh, went through, fine, 38 years later, that's where we are right now. And these per people are the ones who are were separated for life. But Tamat Shah Miriam, so Miriam, then it says Miriam died there. Lama Nisma Chamita Miriam, the parts of Paraduma. So the Rashi, let me just finish. Why, the Rashi asks, why did the, why, what's the connection between uh, Miriam's death and the Parsha, the section dealing with the red cow? So, lo marlachat is to tell you, to tell, and tell everybody, mar karbanok nechaprim, just as karbanot sacrifices or offerings are the atonement, so just as the paraduma causes atonement for the person, af mita tzadikim, mechaper, also the death of tzadikim are an atonement. So here, when, in it, when a... Uh, Tzadik, uh, a tzaddik or tzaddik, uh, uh, a tzaddik, a tzaddik, it's not a tzaddik, I remember we, we went through this in Hebrew, in grammar, but the female a tzaddik, okay, when they die, they, if the generation mourns for them, by the way, if they recognize that there was something, then their death becomes an atonement for us. Does that sound familiar to anybody here? <laughs> the death of a person becomes an atonement for everybody else. Now, it doesn't mean the kind of It doesn't mean from now forever. It just means previous. So, again, we have to appreciate their death. That's where Christianity got this from. Yeah. Okay? Let's understand. That's what they got. It, it was a concept, which is why we learned in Parshat uh, Shlach. Tell a little bit of a truth. Tell a lie with a little bit of truth, and it holds. 
So since people had this concept of a tzaddik dying, causing atonement, they just took it a little further and made it a kind of But from here and forevermore, when if you just accept Jesus, yeah. then you would be uh, good. It has no semblance of reality, so the, the, but the, the that's what they hold. Jewish followers bought in that. They bought that. Right, because it, was, it sounded familiar to them. The death of a righteous person caused atonement. Wow. Yeah, your question is. Um, was there a miscounting or miscalculation in Egypt when they said leave it and therefore, therefore, and so a bunch of people decided to leave Egypt then or were slaughtered um, the short way? That's one of the reasons. There was also one. What, there was also that story. Yes, when yeah, people left Egypt. early because right. they thought they could, they should, and they left. Yes. Right, and they yes. Were slaughtered. So was there also a miscalculation when people should die? No. no, because what happened, there was no miscalculation for the people who died uh, as to when they're going to die. What happened was they said they were going to die in the 40th year. So the people who were, uh, there was a question in their mind, are we going to die? So they made the graves oh. and uh, the ninth of Av when they're supposed to die, they, they went in. Then they said they didn't die. They woke up the next morning. Oh. And so they said, okay, we must have the wrong date. So they, they went to sleep in the grave again, the 10th and the 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. Finally on the 15th, when they saw that it was a full moon, oh. they said, okay, obviously we didn't make it. That was two Ba'av, right. 15th of Av. And that's why two Ba'av is a happy day because they realized oh. that they were right with the original counting, but now they're verified that they would not live, that they would live, sorry. So what's two Ba'av? That's not, oh, that's, 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 uh, that's to Bishvat. To, to Bishvat has to do with trees. To Ba'av yeah. uh, has to do with the, the allowing of the women to marry and so on and so forth. Oh, but no, to Ba'av no, is a very happy day. When, when uh, the, all the fires went out that were burning uh, Yerushalayim or something? I don't know that one. Oh, no, that was, uh, I don't know that one. Sorry. Oh, it was burning until the, what, the afternoon of the 10th. That's what the we can, temple was burning. The temple, the temple. temple was burning. Uh, oh, the main, yeah, the main burning was on the tenth, and yeah. so by the afternoon, I think it's it stops. Probably can eat meat not until the afternoon. Correct, yeah. correct. Okay, so uh, now she dies, and she, and was uh, Rashi explains Avhibnashikameta. She also died with the kids of death from God. Now this is a gentle death. It wasn't. Uh, she didn't die horribly. It was uh, apparently she went to sleep, and that was the end of it, and it was done. Okay, so then Rashi said, uh, the ass or the Gemara asked, so if that's the case, she died with the kiss of by Hashem. Why does it say that? So it said, because it, no, it wouldn't be proper honor for Hashem to say that. But when it comes to Aaron, it says, by the word of Hashem. And, and it's also hinted to with, by the way, with. Um, Moshe doesn't say Alpi Hashem with Moshe either, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. It only just says he died. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we made the connection. So what happens? She died, and next verse we hear is Loyamayimlaida. There was no water for the corrugation. They assembled against Moshe and Aaron. What happened here? She died and there's no water. What's the connection? So Raj explained, Mikan Shikol Arbim Shana. So from here we learned that all 40 years in the, that they were in the wilderness, Hayalahem Be'ir, Bizachut Miriam, that their well was there in the merit of Miriam. Why why would it be why, why did she deserve to have the water? Go back in her history, what'd she oh, do? She Water. She gave the servants water. No, she watched her. She watched. She watched, she watched Moshe. She watched Moshe. No, Rivka is a different thing. But she watched Moshe in the in the uh, water. So that was the merit. Water, water. Yeah. What does uh, Kos Miriam refer to? Is that something? Kos Miriam. I, I don't. I understand what Kos means. I, I don't know. I think that the conservative reform came up with for Seder. Oh, that, that's that's a new uh, Mishagas. Uh, <laughs> that's not that's not from us. Yeah, they, so, yeah. Right, right. That, yeah. That's why they also have. Uh, PC, in other words, basically, Kos Eliyahu, Kos Miriam. Oh, I don't know if that's what they did. They also have an orange for the. Uh, oh, I read for that. For the gay lesbian. I read that. Story. Yeah, it's only that. So yeah. they they make a whole bunch of things. Uh, yeah. I don't. If, if my advice is, whenever it comes to a conservative or or a reform custom 
is to ask the Reformed Conservative, and hopefully they'll know what their reason they do it. I do not keep up with them to know everything they've done, so I, it's not fair for me to answer, yeah. but I, I do know that they have an orange, and they have a whole bunch of things yeah. that uh, is all symbolic today. Yeah. I'm surprised they haven't kicked out the wicked son, personally. I would think they would kick out the wicked son because it's not, it's not PC. It to well, no, they didn't. They, they still have it, as far as I know. But again, I, I'm, I'm surprised they have not done it. But uh, uh, different question. Okay. I, again, I would, invite, I would invite you to call up the other uh, clergy and let them <coughs> explain where their own things came from because I have no idea what they're talking about when they do that. Uh, I mean, when you hear it, it sounds logical. But if you hear it from them, yeah. they, they have some yeah. sort of, yeah. Yeah. not that they're based upon anything, it's just, it just sounds logical because they've thought it out. So you could probably even Google it. But I, I think it would be nice to ask them to put them on the, uh, like they always do the Orthodox, they ask us, we answer. <laughs> Let them answer why they do what they do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so then what happens? So now, by the way, I, I want to I just explain one more other thing. Uh, Hirsch, because I know I'm going to miss it otherwise. Hirsch says, what's the connection between Miriam's death and running out of water? Why? Because if it's in her merit, which is what Rashi is saying, so it's clear in her merit that the well was there. Well, wouldn't it make sense that it would continue to go on even after her death? Yeah. It's in her merit, so let it go after her death. Yes. You don't think it would make sense? No, oh, right, but there's another example before when Sarah died. The three miracles went away, yeah. the, the call and so on and so forth. But that was because there was nobody to replace her. Right. Okay, but here you have Moshe yeah. and Aaron, let everybody replace her, or let the merit, by the way, that wasn't a merit, that was a miracle. Right. There was no merit that she had that was, that the challah was lit, that the, the candles were lit, and uh, from Shabbos to Shabbos, and there's a third thing. Uh, I forget the third thing offhand. But there was three things that, she, but that was not a, in merit of anything. Here it's in somebody's merit. So just as we have chaz de avot, the kindness of the fathers, what we say to Hashem every single day, three times a day, that we're coming to you with, with chaz de uh, of avot, have compassion on us because you did for our forefathers, we're still riding upon their merits. So why couldn't it be that we're riding upon her merits? So what? She died. Continue the, uh, continue it on. Let the well continue. So Hirsch says a fascinating statement. I've said it many times, but it's well worth saying again. Because people didn't mourn Miriam. She died, they buried her. Viter, let's go on. What happened? This is it's a deck and she was singing at the Yamsuf. You see what I'm saying? She was singing at the Yamsuf. She led the women. She was one. She was a Nevia. She was a prophetess. And that Vatika Bir Miriam. I mean, Vayama Vatama Miriam Vatika Bir Sham. She buried. She was. She died. We don't even want to take her to a, a funeral place. Plant her. No fanfare. Nothing. What happened? There's no nothing saying the people cried. Why? You just lost one of your major leaders. And Hirsch says, because of that, because the people didn't appreciate her, mm. Hashem took away the well. Yeah. Um, was it by the people's own, uh, own will, or was it one of Moshe's commands to wait for Miriam before he started moving? No, it was the people's so. will. Okay. Well, so Hashem also said, don't, you know, right. she can't come with you, so the people said, we're not going to leave her. Right, so right. the people, so back then, when she was alive, they had respect for her. They, she, they saw her. Okay, her. you can have respect, but you know, again, no, where, no, where's no. where's your crying now? Right now, I was, I was wondering if, if they actually saw her as a leader back then, as, as an Yeah, person. they did. Certainly did. Right. Again, she led the people. She led the, the women in song. She was a great leader. Leaderess. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now what happens? Moshe. So now the nation argued with Moshe. more, and they said. Uh, and they said, saying, or quote, Rather, we should have died with our brothers before Hashem. We had only perished. So Rashi says, what's going on here? It should only be that we died uh, with the death of our uh, brothers. And he said, That we should die with our brothers in a plague. Why? Lamad is teaching us, Shemitat Sama, Miguna Mimena that the death from thirst is the most horrible death. It's worse than everything else. 
So rather die in the plague, rather die anywhere else. But why should I have to die from thirst? There's, we're in the wilderness. There is no water. The well is dried up. Run away from us, whatever it's going to be. And so you should let us die before. Why are you doing this to us? And of course, it's Moshe's fault, right? So they said, uh, you bring it. Why did you bring the congregation of Hashem Ella Midbar to this Midbar to this wilderness Lamutsham to die there? Achenu We and our cattle. Oh, he, he even included the cattle too. So uh, they said, Anachnu, we we and our we and our cattle. So humans and uh, ourselves. So he, uh, he, he brings up a whole point here. The people protest. He said the pe- that the people needed water is understandable, but that, they, but that they should, by the vehemence of their complaint, repeat the sins of the previous generation is puzzling. A comparison of this uh, passage with earlier protests, however, shows the difference. They did not complain about meat or the bland nature of the manna as their elders had. They demanded water. And as not Rashi notes, death by thirst is a horrifying prospect. Nor, they, nor did they say that they wanted to return to Mitzrayim. When they asked rhetorically why Moshe had taken them from Egypt, they meant that he should have led them on a route that would afford them at least such a basic necessity as drinking water. God is indulgent of the people who have a legitimate complaint, even when they voice it more provocatively than they should have. In other words, what they should have said was, Moshe Rabbeinu, we have a problem, we have no water. What should we do? Very nice, very calm. Instead, they're saying, what, you bring us out, huh? Same old, same old. Okay. Falama Eli to me, Mitzrayim. Why'd you bring us out from Mitzrayim? To bring us to this horrible, pl- this bad place, Lomakom Zara. Isnai is on a place of seed. Uteeno and of figs. I always get those two confused. Vegafen or grapes, uh, wine. Verimo and pomegranates. Nothing there. Umayam, I understand, and there's no water to drink. Out of everything else, Moshe Rabbeinu, give me a break. There's no water here. We can't live without water. So Moshe and Aaron came, by the way, again, for, grammar, for grammatical purposes. It should have said, Vayavo u Moshe v'yaron, plural. Instead it says, Vayavo. Uh, and that's, again, uh, like always explaining that Moshe is the lead runner. Aaron's just following. He's in the background. For Vayavo Moshe v'yaron v'pnei kahal. That Moshe and Aaron came before the Kehila, before the congregation, El Petach, El Hamaid, to the opening of the tent of meeting, and they fell on their faces. They davened. And so Hashem, the glory of Hashem, appeared to them. Okay. By the way, there is no Rashi on all of this. Just so you should know. Rashi is very quiet. It's a, because Rashi only comes to tell you when it's shot when it's a problem shot there's no there's problem shot everybody understands what's going on it's the same old same old same old so here's what here's what happens by the bear hashem hashem spoke to moshe saying not to, by the way to aaron he doesn't speak to aaron right even though aaron and moshe fell before hashem he's only talking to moshe why because moshe is a leader so kach edamate take the staff which staff are we talking about? The staff he always had. The staff that he would hit the Nile with, the staff, that staff. Take that staff. And assemble the congregation, you, Aaron, and your brother. Listen to the words. el hasela, And you, plural, both of you. Wait, wait, I see him. Vidibartem el hasela, and you, both of you. Speak to the rock, Le'enehem, in front of them. V'natam imav, and it will give its waters. V'ot say to lehem, mayim, I mean, and it should give forth its waters. Far this above conversive. It should give forth its waters. V'ot say to lehem, mayim menasela, and you will cause water to come out from this, from the rock. V'hishkita et ha'eda, and you will cause the 
congregation to have water, the et biram biram, and also their and their cattle. And he says, Mikan, why do I have to include the cattle, not just them? So Rashi says, Mikan Yisrael. From here we see that Hashem has compassion on the money of Israel. In other words, God cares about everything we have. Your question is I mean, is he carrying it around? I don't think so. Right. It's, just a it's just there. It's going to be stay, stay there just to prove that Aaron is uh, the tribe of Levi. Right. Is, right. Okay. There's not the staff we're talking about. No, but, I'm just wondering about the staff. But let's right. Answer that last. Rosh, I mean, uh, our school also points out one other thing that I, I forgot to mention. It says here that uh, go to, uh, where does it say, take water from the rock. What do you mean, the rock? It's whenever you say the, you're pointing to a specific rock. The, whenever it's a definite article, it's a rock we already know. Uh, oh. I, I never met a rock I didn't like, you know. <laughs> but it's uh, Rashi. Rashi, I mean, uh, Ashkel brings down. The definite article, the, indicates that this was a known rock. Yeah. The sages teach that Hashem had created a rock yeah. That he used often as a source of miraculous waters. This was the rock that the angel revealed to Hagar when he is, when her son Yishmael was dying of thirst, and from which Moshe was committed to draw water nearly forty years earlier. And the same rock accompanied the people throughout their wanderings as long as Miriam was alive. After her death, it sealed, it yielded, it ceased to yield water, and it was hidden. So here you can imagine again. Think about what what the midrash is saying that the the rock the particular rock traveled with them can you imagine seeing a rock just going on his own and giving forth water so okay fine it beat, uh, beat all the plumbing we have yeah uh, there's a phenomena phenomenon phenomena where there's i think a, it's like a weird desert thing where there's rocks that move because the it, it the water under them freezes at night and it expands so they slowly move during the day oh really so okay the, like months so they you see like like the big trail behind it like the big like it's going because okay the dirt. it's interesting very interesting okay so now again what did hashem do did you something hit the rock no. what do you tell speak to the rock yeah. okay yeah. so yeah. moshe moshe took ed hamate the staff from before as he was commanded. And Moshe and Aaron assembled at Kahal the Kehila, the congregation. El to the front of or in front of the rock. And he said to them, Shim Hamorim. Listen now, or please listen, however, not whatever, not what I mean. Listen now, or please listen. The, the rebellious ones. Hamin hasela hazeh. The hey is interrogative. Hey, is from this rock? Notzi lechamayim. Can we bring forth water to you? Okay, that's his statement. Now Rashi says ve'akilu ze echad. Now how many people are there? How many people are in Bnei Israel right now? Approximately three million. How in God's name are you going to assemble them in front of a rock? You had 601,770 left. Okay. Okay, but that's the men from 20 to 60. You have approximately still 3 million people. Right, okay. So the question Ross says is, how is it possible to gather 3 million, 2 million, 1 million? Yeah. 100,000! I don't care what numbers you want to give. 600,000 oh. in front of a rock. A rock is not that big. No, no matter how much, no matter how huge the rock is going to be, you're not going to fit them in. Okay, they're not going to see it. So Rashi explains, This is one of the places that Hashem created a miracle that is a small place that held a major amount of people. Okay, so they could all see. And then, So Rashi, again, when it comes to uh, from this rock, can we take water out? So Rashi explains, Because they did not recognize it, in other words, Moshe and Aaron, or the people, didn't recognize which rock it was. Why? Because the rock decided to go back home 
and it hid itself amongst the other rocks. <laughs> okay, so it went to its people. He went to his home. And so, Yisrael Omrim Lehem. So now, Bnei Yisrael said to them, "Malachem is this seller totsi lanu mayim? What do we care? Which rock, which rock are you going to take the water from?" The Chacham Lehem Hamorim. Therefore, he said to they, they he said to them, "Rebels, Sarbanim, stubborn people, Lashon Yoni." In Greek, the language would be Shotim, fools. Okay, Morim et Morehem. Uh, is it from this rock that we were not commanded about it can we take water from it in other words we have a specific command it's not just any rock it's not a magic trick it's not uh, copper filled working here it's Hashem tells us we have to take it from the rock so it has to be the exact rock now it went back home we have to deal with that too we have to coax it out we have to, we have to do but nonetheless that's what's going on okay so what happens uh, just, just keep going with the story and then we can go back a little so Vayarem Moshe Etido so Moshe picked up his hand raised his hand and he hit the rock twice with his staff. Why twice? That's the question you should be asking. Why twice? Why did he hit it at all? But the first time, why did he hit it all? It said, Now he's hitting it. And then he hits it not once, but twice. By the way, Pa'amayim, you learned, yeah, you all learned this. Pa'amayim is the dual language. It's not Pa'amim, which would mean times, but Pa'amayim is twice. A lot of water came out, but and the congregation and the animals drank. Fine. And their animals drank. So Rashi says, what's going on twice? Because the first, when he hit the rock the first time, all that came out were uh, little drops. Why? Because Hashem did not command him to hit it. Yeah. Rather, he told them to talk to the rock. But they spoke to another rock, and the water did not come out. Amru. So they said, and here's the mistake. Maybe it has to be hit like the first stone 40 years ago when Hashem told me hit the rock. Mm. Maybe it has to be that. Mm. Oh. He had logic. He's using uh, Jewish logic here. Okay. Maybe it has to be the same thing. So that's when he hits it. And of course, he does it when it. He hits it once, water comes out, and then the second time he hits it, and all the water comes out. But his logic was, oh, it, well, I spoke to it, and it did not come out. Mm -hmm. So it must be that Hashem wants me to do it. Why would he think that, by the way? Because Hashem said, Kach et hamate, take the staff. What do I need the staff for if I don't have to hit it? Huh. You, God, set me up. Huh. You understand? Huh. Does anybody ask why Hashem let the water come out of the rock? The first time? Or even uh, the second time it flowed bountifully. Right. Uh, does anybody, I'm sure some people ask. Um, so, why, so why even did it, yeah. uh, <laughs> The answer is I, I have never seen it, but I'm sure it's been asked by somebody. Yeah. I've never seen the answer. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's an obvious question. Why does it allow it to happen at all? But, yeah. but the other question is, here's Moshe Rabbeinu, and really we're concentrating more on that. <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu is the Neaman, Neaman by Hashem, right? He's, he's, he's most trustworthy in Hashem's house, if you will. He spoke to Hashem, mouth to mouth, as it were, okay? He had clear uh, visions. So how could it be that he would have made such a mistake? Oh, no, he spoke to the Ron Rock at first, huh? That's what Rashi says. And then, so how did he then get focused on the correct rock? And, and, and if he knew that he had now had to, looking at the correct rock, but he struck it. Right. So it could have been a couple of things. By the way, you could say a couple of things. One, he spoke to the wrong rock. He hits that rock. And Hashem says, okay, okay, okay. It's not what I wanted, but I'm going to let it happen because I care more about the people. And this was just a test for you, and you flunked. Oh. Could have been that. It could have been something oh. like that. Oh. Or it could have been that he hit the right rock by accident oh. 
and it could have been right next to it or something. It could have been like that. I mean, yeah. Well, so the question is again: the question is how could Moshe, how could Moshe fall into this? Yeah, so yeah. the answers that that they give are varied. Rambam says that it's because she says Shimuna Hamorim, listen, you rebels. He gives Musar. Uh-huh. Moshe Hashem didn't tell him to give the people Musar. Uh-huh. Hashem said, speak to the rock. It's a very simple direction here. Speak to the rock. And the rock will and the rock will flow. Don't have to do anything else. Don't have to say any speeches. No grandiose things. Don't have to threaten the people. Don't say, "Should we take rock water out of this rock?" Speak to the rock. But they, they complained to him first, though. So why shouldn't he address them back as rebels? Because Hashem didn't come in to do that. I remember we're talking at Hashem's command. Oh, we should have just just go speak, speak to the rock. Talk to the rock. Pretty right. Pretty. By the way, how many times? When somebody's tell, uh, yelling at me, or whoever they want to yell at, sometimes he's talking to a rock. You might as well just talk to the rock because you're not going to get anywhere, right? So there's an expression like that too, where you, it's a waste of time to talk. So instead of, I don't want to hear your speech, I just want the water. I don't care how you do it. No, but they, they complained to him before. Right. God gave him the command. To right, right. So, to he, and he davened. And he spoke back. And he dove. No, 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 no. They, they came to him, they complained. And then Moshe and Aaron went before the, the, key, the Kila. They dove into Hashem. Hashem appeared to them. Hashem said, take the staff, talk to the rock. The water will come out. And then before he does it, oh, she went out yeah, what, oh, what are you telling the people off for? You lost oh, your temper. And when you, and when you lose your temper, Rambam says, you oh. lose. By the way, how could Moshe have made a mistake on the rock? Yeah. Because... He lost Navua because he got angry. People who are angry cannot have Navua. Okay. That's when you make mistakes. Okay. So, they so that's what he, they got him upset. Right, they, and he he gave into it. Okay. And what does that mean, by the way, when he gets upset? You give the wrong answer. It's a vote of Zara. Ah, ah. It's a vote of Zara because you you think that, uh, you think you're God suddenly. You have the God complex. So you don't she believe in God. You think you're in control. Okay. She's getting angry. Why are you doing that? Uh, she went out more rip. Okay. That's Ramba. That's Ramba. That's a great lesson. Okay, that's Ramba. So then, the, uh, now let's look at the next lines because this becomes important for uh, Ramban. So, Vayomer Hashem and Moshe Aaron. Moshe said to both Aaron, Moshe and Aaron, Ya'an lohemantem bi. Because you did not now, what does Hemantem B mean? Does it mean you didn't believe in me? Does it mean you didn't trust me? What exactly? What does that word mean? It's an interesting statement. Uh, but Hashem, if I say what they say in English, you didn't believe in me. Uh, the short is Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen is trust. Uh, agree. Yeah. Huh. And what happens? Yan yash lo Hemantem B lahaktisheni. Because you didn't believe me, because you didn't trust in me to sanctify me, Lene Bene Israel in front of Bene Israel, Lachain, therefore, Lota Viu et Hakahal Laze El Haaretz, therefore, you, plural, both of you, will not bring this Kehila, this congregation, to the land of Shanatati Lehem that I have given, I have already given to them. Wait, I want you to hear that. Okay, again. You didn't trust me. You didn't believe in me to sanctify my name. What is going on here? Rashi explains Gila Katuf that the Pasuk is revealing If not for that, if not for this sin alone, Hayu Nichnasin Laarch, they would have entered both of them. Would have entered to the land of Israel, Kadeshlo Yomru Alehem, Kavon Sha'ar Dora Midbar, and but they didn't. So now what's, what are we afraid of? That perhaps people are going to say, just as the, the rest of B'nai Israel did not enter into Israel because of the spies, the, uh, the accounts of spies, so also Avram, also Moshe, and Aaron didn't. No. So the Torah tells us that this is the reason. Shenigzar al-Alehem, shalichim shul arts uh, that this is the uh, sin that they didn't have, that they no. did, so they would not enter. Then it says, uh, yeah, uh, we're set, and so now Rashi asked another question. He said, Hello, son of a car, you should hate customers. He said, Wait a second, this is a this isn't such a bad uh sin. The worst sin was when Moshe and uh, when uh, Shem said to Moshe, 
I'm going to give them what they want. Remember, they were asking for meat and everything else. Yeah. They had the whole menu they wanted. Oh. And so Moshe says, after God says, I'm going to give it to him. He says, if you would slaughter all of the sheep and the cattle, you still couldn't feed them. That sounds like a bigger oh. uh, complaint. I mean, oh. if I'm going to pick on Moshe for something, for crying out let me have that one. That's a real, you know, shtach at God. You don't have the power to do it. Wow. So why was I punished for that? Oh. So Ella, Shafi, uh, it's true it was worse but because that was between God and him that wasn't in front of the people so that's why Hashem had compassion on Khan but here and he did in front of all of Israel he didn't listen to the words he hid it he did not speak to it so he didn't uh, have compassion on them because it's all of God's name and then was me lakti sheni she ilu dibar temelasela. How would you have sanctified me if you would have spoken to the rock, vahoti, and it would have brought out the water? Hayitim akudosh leene haed. I would have been sanctified in the eyes of the kihila. Why? For Omer and Masel is there she enu medaviv enu shemeya ve enu sarik le parnasa. Just as this rock does neither speaks nor listens nor can hear and doesn't need to be supported. It's a rock. It doesn't need anything. And Mekayim Dibaro Shemakom. And yet still, even though it gets no advantage by fulfilling the words of Hashem, it does call the Chomer Anu. All the more so we would have said, we have to do it. That's why it says, you didn't sanctify me amongst Bnei Israel. If you would have done it, then they would have had that. So therefore, I will not let you come in to the land of Israel. Yes, your question is, Aaron, because he didn't speak up, some people say. Aaron really had nothing to do with this, right? So Aaron, because he didn't stop Moshe, he was implicit, complicit in that sin. He should have said, Moshe, Hashem said, talk, just talk to the rock. That's what he should have said. But uh, since he didn't, he was, uh, he was, he was punished. He, say it again? Yes. And we'll have to stop here. Gosh.